The blue economy really looks uh, from the outside of the universe onto the Earth. And the Earth is blue. She's not green. The Earth is very blue indeed. We have a blue sky, we have a blue ocean, and somehow what we've been pursuing is a green economy. Now, I've been part of the green economy for more than 30 years. I've created several companies that were pioneering the concept of the green business by creating green detergents and a green factory and being very committed to green architecture. However, the problem with the green economy is that we're expecting governments to subsidize and tax the products, whereas the consumers on top of that are expected to pay more and investors are expected to put up more capital with less returns. Now, how could we ever expect the green economy to take off when it depends on subsidies, taxes, consumers paying more and investors getting less? It just is not going to work. And it's not going to work especially at a time when there is an economic crisis, when people are worried about their future, about their jobs. Everyone is trying to cut corners. Everyone is trying to do better. Everyone is trying to make the best use of the money that they have available and paying more is not really the proposal that we can impose on anyone today. But there is a blue economy. And the blue economy that is inspired by the Earth, by these ecosystems, by the very efficient functioning of just about everything and everyone around us. The only one that seems to be inefficient is us, the human being. Now in nature no one is taxing and no one is subsidizing. In nature Everyone looks for innovations, looks for something new, looks for something better. And so what we have to do in order to get on track with sustainability and outcompeting the present economic system that is unsustainable, in order to embark on a path towards sustainability for all, we and business and the entrepreneurs, we have to embrace innovations. And if we are embracing the innovations that are inspired by the way natural systems function, whatever we do, it's going to be sustainable. And that is the proposal of the blue economy. It is nothing less and nothing more than embarking on a massive innovative development, creative, finding out new ways, eliminating things that we shouldn't have done in the first place, and making certain that we can respond to people's needs with what we have. That's exactly how nature has been operating for millennia. The first thing Japanese companies need to realize is that innovations are going to be overwhelming. They're going to change the rules of the game. What we're going to see is a shift in competitiveness like we've never seen before. And the strategy of the past of Japanese companies, just like American and European companies, which has been to focus on a core business based on a core competence, is not going to work anymore. The innovations will be so pervasive that many of the core competences will simply evaporate. If we take the case of the battery. You know, so many people are trying to find the green batteries to replace the toxic lead cadmium batteries that were polluting our environment. But if we're only going for a green battery, we're using less metals and we're still polluting. Why? Because polluting less is still polluting. Business needs to come back to the principles that I had the privilege of introducing to Japan in 1994, which is zero waste and zero emissions. Zero waste and zero emissions means that we have to start cascading nutrients we have to start cascading energy so that nothing is wasted. But if we're still depending so much on metals, 
like with the batteries or the green batteries, then we're still relying on the rare earth metals, we're relying on mining and smelting, and that is exactly one of the reasons why we are not competitive, not sustainable. So making the green battery is not going to be the solution. The real solution is going to be no batteries. We're going to substitute the battery with no batteries. Now, the challenge for Japanese business is to realize that the core competence, which is the making of the battery, is going to be of no use anymore. We're going to be able to do it without the battery. So what's the, what's the drive, what's the investment, what's the dedication to finding the green when you can do without any batteries at all? And what is the result of this? The result is that, for example, if we eliminate the use of the battery, we're going to be eliminating the existing products on the market. Imagine your MP3 player, your video recorder, imagine your cell phone or your hearing aid or a pacemaker. All of these will be completely eliminated from the present design frameworks because everything relies on the battery. And now we're doing it without a battery? So, business has to get ready, has to be prepared, think through how some of these innovations are going to make it possible for entrepreneurs to get on the market fast and outcompete in price and performance. This is something we haven't expected for years. This is something we haven't seen for decades. We have been training our MBAs, our Masters of Business Administration, to look at the cash flow, to look at marketing strategies. And what we're now realizing is that many of these innovations, inspired by nature, introduced to the market, are so competitive that the game is different. It is a game that is so different from the one that Goliath had to play with David. You remember the story. David won. Why? Because David changed the rules of the game. Business in Japan has to realize that the rules of the game are going to be changed. David is going to throw the stones without Goliath ever realizing that he was going to be in a stone-throwing game instead of a wrestling game. And I think this is where business needs to start thinking anew. When we look at the more than 100 innovations that I'm presenting in the book, The Blue Economy, when we're looking at 100 innovations that we're presenting week after week for two years in a row, then business will realize that if this is the game that is going to be played on the market, we better start changing the way we look at innovations and sustainability right now. One of the most fascinating innovations that I see around is inspired by the zebra. Yeah, the zebra, like the one I have on my tie. The zebra has black and white stripes. And very often we've wondered why does the zebra have black and white stripes? And some people think it's because camouflage, to protect itself. But actually, the zebra designed one of the most efficient air conditioning systems in the world. Actually, we know the basis, the underlying physics, how this works. But we never made the connection. In the blue economy, we'll be making many connections. Black gets hot. When it's hot, the air rises. When the air rises, there is low pressure. White reflects the heat. Therefore, it is cooler. The cooler air is denser and therefore has higher pressure. High pressure, low pressure, wind. The zebra is capable of reducing the surface temperature by 9 degrees Celsius solely by using the laws of physics. Now, if we want to decrease the temperature inside our house by 9 degrees, protecting ourselves against the heat from the outside, we will use polyurethane foams. It's chemistry. It's chemistry that even relies on greenhouse gases. So, in order to save energy, we're using chemistry, and the zebra only uses physics. Now, that's the difference in the blue economy. Whenever we find lasting solutions, we'll be looking for solutions that are part of the laws of physics. Whereas our green economy and our traditional economy has been relying too much on, on chemistry and on biology. Now we forget that everything in physics is predictable 
and has no exceptions. Everything in biology is an exception because we call it biodiversity. So when we want to have a secure and predictable output for industry or in building designs, then we are having to rely on physics first and foremost. Unfortunately, we are relying too much on chemistry and biology. And as a result, we have to manage the biology and the chemistry to the point that we are succeeding in getting the predictable results. But physics is much easier. So when Daiwa House asked me how this could be applied to the building design, we were receiving the challenge from Daiwa House to actually put it into practice. Today, Daiwa House has an office building in Sendai for about 150 people. And together with the architect Anders Nuqvist, we designed a building that really plays on the black and white. The temperature inside the building decreased by 5 degrees. 5 degrees is not a bad result. We're not as good as a zebra. The zebra is much smarter. The zebra can do 9 degrees. But 5 degrees is not a bad result at all. And what we're noticing is that by solely using the interplay of black and white, we can save energy. Now, Traditional logic that we apply is to use a wide building because we want everything to reflect. Nature knows better. You will seldom find a purely white structure, surface in nature. Nature will always use different colors in order to generate that surface whirl of wind that will take the heat away and make it comfortable inside. The key is that everyone now is really empowered to use its purchasing power and make a difference. The nice thing is that until now, when we wanted to be green, we had to pay more. Now we're going to be blue and pay less. What is the great advantage is that we will see young entrepreneurs coming up and very early on we're going to be able to give them a vote of confidence a vote of confidence by buying their products. Not buying their products because we want to spend more, buying their products because we want it to be cheaper. I'm waiting for the day that all the coffee waste from the Starbucks, the Tullys and the Mr. Dutter, that all the coffee wastes are being recycled and regenerated into shiitake. I don't know why shiitake mushrooms have to be expensive. They could be a third of the price, a fourth of the price, if only we were not using hardwoods like oak in order to grow them and we would use coffee which is also a hardwood in order to farm them. I think when we have cheap shiitake we will be happy and buy more. But what we have to realize is that our simple capacity to buy cheaper shiitake will be able to change the business model from a system whereby we're logging hardwoods in China and Latin America in order to get our appetite satisfied for shiitake mushrooms and now we can recycle, cascade the nutrients from the waste of coffee from coffee shops in order to have the great taste of shiitake on our plates every day. This is just one of the examples of the more than 100 that we will see emerge when the blue economy is a reality.